What is log sequence number? Have you ever noticed how the LSN is assigned for the active transaction? Whenever the active transaction going on for the SQL Server engine, how the LSN is assigned? What is the functionality of LSN? How it works? Have you ever talked about it? So today's session, it's all about the LSN, log sequence number. So hope you will like it. Please be with me uh, till the further, you know, uh, the complete session. I'm going to talk about the LSN log sequence number in details with the as well instance architectural view. I will take the example of the queries and will you know will flow the query inside the instance and then we'll see how the LSN is behaving right and what how the LSN is going to assign for the active transaction okay so once again welcome to my channel tech and art guys who are new on my channel please like do subscribe okay and please the bell icon so that you can get the notification for the new video okay and if you like the video, please give a thumbs up. So let's connect to the session. Okay. Let me minimize. So before talking to LSN in details, if you look at this diagram, this is the complete diagram for a SQL Server engine, right? So I'm going to take the example of a queries and we'll discuss here you know how the LSN is going to assign for the active transaction if you look at here uh, the complete SQL Server engine is divided in a two part as you can see here the relation engine and the storage engine okay so firstly we'll consider the relation engine how the query is coming to relation engine and how the behavior so let's assume here we are going to talk about DML query. You are going to insert, you know, thousand of records in a particular table, and that for that transaction, how the LSN is going to assign by the SQL Server engine itself. Okay, as we discussed already in architectural video, how the you know uh, query is coming to the relation engine and storage engine, but I am going to talk about a bit here again for the recall the session. Okay. So let's assume, uh, as we said here already, the query is coming through the, you know, as a TDS format to the protocol layer, okay? And here we are getting the actual SQL query and that query is going to command parser through the language event. So basically language event is nothing, just a uh, SQL Server engine collation, okay? And this command parser section, uh, it's going to check whether the you know query having the syntax or semantics error if it is any error It will revert back to the again with the same approach if it is not error. It will create a query tree Okay, and it will send to the optimizer. So basically query tree is nothing just execution plan and then optimizer will create and will choose a best efficient plan for that particular query and it will send to the query executor and query executor will do uh, it will simply execute the query and it will send to the access method so now your query the same dml query is now in a storage engine so storage engine also having the different functionality okay so in a access method going to check whether the query is select or non select so we already talked here this time the query is a you know non select query so it's a insert query so it will not send to the buffer manager it will come to the transaction manager okay so from here the you know the actual rule is going to start about the lsn so what transaction manager's task is transaction manager will simply send the log to transaction log and it will assign one lsn okay so as we talked about how the lsn is assigned so for each transaction Transaction manager is creating one LSN that is unique number. Okay, that is called log sequence number and that is unique. Okay, so whenever he assigned the LSN, it's keeping a log also, as I said, log manager and log manager, LOG log manager and LOCK log manager. Two types of log they are placing on that uh, transaction because uh, you know, uh, 
if lock will be not there uh, there may uh, may be some you know uh, the data duplicacy issues right inconsistent data so uh, if you uh, take an example uh, when you are inserting the rows and during that same time if someone is doing the transaction and you know if you didn't place the lock there if lock is not there then they will get the duplicate data right so that's the reason two types of lock i have already discussed in an architectural video you can go and visit the complete session i will give the link in a description how the log is working and lock manager and lock manager is working lock lock okay so here basically all about the lsn so you know uh, so transition manager task is creating uh, sending the log to the transition log and it's assigning a unique number that's called log sequence number okay so until the transaction is going to commit here it's then it, it will forward to the buffer manager it directly not coming to the data file as i already discussed in an architectural video log transaction log is directly not coming to the data file it's coming towards uh, you know the same approach like uh, it's coming to a buffer manager and here in a data cache log writer will write uh, to the logs to the data file once the checkpoint occurred okay so the with the same approach so this is the phenomena it's happening in a cyclic way whenever the you know uh, the active transaction is coming to sql server engine and the log manager transaction, transaction manager is going to you know assigning a log uh, ls uh, log sequence number on that particular transaction so each transaction having a unique log sequence number right so this is the main advantage when you you know uh, doing the recovery of database uh, you know so there is a major role about uh, the log sequence number because because based on the lsn only we can consider uh, when the database uh, you know up to when database is recovered right so this is the major thing uh, in uh, transition log okay and same uh, we can it's helping to the database you know uh, log shipping as well if you see my session about log shipping uh, sometimes you know database uh, is not synced we are getting the error transition logs is missing there also the lsn is uh, playing the major role when we are identifying the missing log backup so up, uh, on the basis of lsn only we are you know uh, identifying the um, missing log backup and then we identify the backups and then we are applying to the manually uh, the that particular log missing missed backup and then the uh, after that log shipping is going to sync right so uh, this lsn is very very important things you need to understand very deeply uh, here uh, entire sql server engine uh, you know whenever we talked about the lsn it's uh, playing the major role uh, you know so this is all about uh, the lsn which i want to convey to you uh, you know how the query is coming to you know the relation engine and the storage engine and then how the transition manager is going to assign a particular lock uh, a particular lsn on that particular transaction okay so hope it's helpful something uh, in the next video, I will create a live demo session how the LSN is uh, behaving uh, in a live 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 session. We can talk about uh, you know uh, what are the functionality and how can we trigger and how can we trace the LSN. Yeah. So hope it will create. Uh, I will come back soon uh, with the live session for the LSN completely in details more. Till then, you can enjoy and I will provide the link. Uh, in a description with the architectural video and all you can go and visit meanwhile okay thank you and if you are new on my channel please like to subscribe we'll meet you soon thank you guys have a nice day